ask you about Dior. Um, what was it like working on that campaign? How is it different working on a fashion film? Uh, I mean, weirdly, I wanted to work with Roman Gavris for ages, and he never answered the phone to me for, <laughs> for like two years trying to get in contact with him. Yeah. And then the Dior thing came up, and I never really considered doing an ad because I always mm. thought people would judge you for it. Uh, and I was like, for some reason, I was like, oh. And I thought I remember meeting the Dior people; they were really cool. And they, were, and they were like, who are you thinking for a director? And I was like, what about Roman Gavris? And they were like, yeah. And I just thought that was a good way to yeah. get him on the phone. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> uh, but it was super fun. It was actually like, like genuine. I really, I really liked making it. And um, uh, we made some kind of good friends. And but yeah, I mean, it wasn't actually that different. I mean, they're just really cool. It's a really cool company to work with. Yeah. Would you do it again? I think I am doing another one with them. Uh, but yeah, I was surprised how easy it is. But they're quite a different company. They're like, yeah. they're all kind of crazy. You work at Dior, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like they kind of just let you do anything yeah. in this shoot. So like it was, I mean it's, I mean it's literally just messing around for three days. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Sounds good. <laughs> right. uh, this one in particular, I, I, you know, after looking at a whole bunch of different ways of working, I decided I, I really wanted to make this one. I wanted, uh, it was, you know, I had written it myself that it was. I would be in control of it, that it would feel kind of tonally of a piece with the first movie and yet be really quite formally different in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know this, uh, whereas Animal Kingdom was a kind of big, sort of slightly heightened social realist thing that, uh, that this would exist as a sort of elemental dark fable. You mm -hmm. know. Um, and uh, you know, and that it was a like intense sort of you know intimate relationship movie set in a really dangerous, inhospitable landscape. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's a whole world of other things that become important to me, but uh, yeah. they evolve. I think it was kind of it was a really amazing place. It was incredibly beautiful. Um, yeah. uh, it feels so alien for me. I mean, especially when we got further and further outside of Adelaide. Yeah. Um, it kind of really helped for the, you know, the further away you got from supposed civilization, mm -hmm. um, the kind of easier it was to really imagine that you, that you were in the world of a movie a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the only yeah. thing, I, it's, I, there's very few downsides. It's such a magical, amazing part of the world to shoot in. I mean, the mm -hmm. only downside really would just be that to get out there, to get where it is that magical, you need to travel quite incredible distances and that can, you know, that chews into your working day. You know, yeah. some people, sometimes we're having to drive an hour or more out to yeah. the set and that's an hour or more that each way that we don't have to shoot that day. No, it was great. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you spend ages writing a character and, it's, mm -hmm. and, uh, and finally you find that actor to, that, to bring that character to life, it's exhilarating yeah. every day. You know, Rob yeah. was doing, you know, when you find the right actor and you find a great actor to play a character you've written, they, mm -hmm. make, they make it so much more than you ever anticipated. And mm -hmm. I had that experience every day. Whenever Rob walked onto set with his monty haircut and his <laughs> jeans that were too big and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, it was just the character was there it was, and it was bubbling and alive and, you know, it's exhilarating. Yeah. I think it was... I had quite a clear idea of what I wanted to do and how I read the part... Uh, before I even auditioned for it, but I was yeah. kind of terrified that I might be doing entirely the wrong thing. So when I got yeah. the part, I was like, okay, well, I'm kind of... I mean, I put in a ton of work to the audition uh, and had really sort of fully committed <laughs> to something before I'd even gone in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms... I had this one tape of this guy I found from Florida. Uh, it was a little, I took a little bit of the accent stuff from him. Uh, David told me th about this documentary, Bully, um, about this really good. And there was a, the way the main, one of the main kids walked. It was this mm -hmm. kind of like weird, like puppy, puppy kind of bouncy walk. Yeah. And there was a bit of movement stuff from that. Um, but yeah, um, it was also very easy to just to do stuff. Well, as soon as you're doing it with Guy, he's kind of, he was just kind of so in. In, a, in the right place, that it was just playing off him, basically. Right now, I'm, do, I'm uh, doing this thing called Idol's Eye with Olivia Sayers directing with uh, De Niro. Um, it's like a gang, it's like a gangster movie. Mm. 
Uh, and then, yeah, it's like later on this year. And David, do you have an idea for your next no, film? I've got a few things bubbling. Yeah. That you know, I'm not sure what in what order the ducks will line up, but you know, I'm trying to not. I don't want to take quite as long to make yeah. the next one as I did to make this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to have a couple of things bubbling at once. But yeah, okay, totally cool. top secret. <laughs>